Welcome to Angela Jane Presents. Today I have an artist with me who is going to share her skill of watercolors. So without further ado, I will let her introduce herself. Right there. Hello, I'm Pamela Burkery and I am a new artist. Uh, I've only been doing this for about a year and a half and uh, I'm exploring the hidden talent inside of me. But I have a few things I'd like to share with you. If you are timid about getting into watercolor, but you really have that desire to. So I just kind of want to go over a few things. It's very simple that you're going to need to start out. One is just a simple palette. This is my palette that I use for travel but you can get just a simple one from the art store or real inexpensive ones from the dollar store. And then you need like a little spray bottle so you can wet your colors down before you start. You need some paper and the paper is important. So you want to get paper that is uh, going with your budget. I prefer to use Archer's paper which is uh, a 140 cold press and you can get a tablet form of paper so you can tear off the pages easier. This is a different one, it's called Canson and it's probably a little less expensive but it is a loose tablet so you just, it's adhered at the top and those are easy to tear off and use. Whereas the Archer blocks are sealed all the way around. And so when you're finished with your picture, then there's a space right here that you take your knife and go in and go all the way around the edge and release the page. The nice thing about the block is that you don't have to tape it down. Whereas the other loose pages, you need to tape it down because it will wave and curl for you. I have taped this page down to my board. It's cardboard. This is a board that is, uh, you can use for painting on. It's got like a styrofoam in the middle, but <clears throat> you can get those from the craft store and cut them yourself to the size you want. You need some water. You need at least two dishes, one for clear water and one for rinse water. Um, your brushes, uh, in, you can invest in one or two nice brushes that feel good to you. Uh, this one that we're gonna use today is a 12, and I have a 10 and a six. You might wanna get a two and a four for something smaller, but for just the beginning, get yourself a medium brush, which might be a six to just play with. Um, also, the tape to tape down the paper. You can use painter's tape, which many, many artists do. Or you could, this is tape that you can get in the art store. So it's just about like the painter's tape. Um, I think I've said everything. You need paper towels. I've got my roll right here. And so that you can wipe your brush on it. One thing I can tell you that helped me right off the bat is you never want to leave your brush sitting in your water. You want to just rinse it off and dry it on your paper towel and leave it flat. If you put it up in your, con in your container like this, the water will get in here and then pretty soon your bristles will start falling out. So you need to lie it flat. Okay, so the first exercise we're going to do is going to be a really fun one. So I hope you're ready. So what we're going to do is with our paper, we're going to wet it generously with some water. Just wet the paper like that. Okay, so after I've wet the paper, you're just going to go to your favorite colors. I'm going to spray this so that I have them ready. Just going to do your, your favorite color and just start plopping in some color. And uh, just play around, use some greens and plop them in and 
do some strokes and just play with it and watch how that paint spreads in there and makes its own design. The nice thing about this is if you feel like, oh gosh, what am I, what would I ever do with this painting afterwards? You can cut them up into little pieces and put them into cards, onto cards. There's lots of things you can do. If you want a little movement, you can just spray it again. It gives you a little bit different look, as you can see, then you can move it around. That's what's nice about having it on a board is to be able to move it around. So this is the fun part of watercolor is seeing the magic happen. Seeing the magic of the colors branch out and flow into each other. Okay, so this is our first exercise, and I hope you enjoyed that. Okay, just clean your brush, and with clear water, make small squares of water across your page. So just little squares going across. Won't have to be anything spectacular. I'm going to pick up some of this paint because there's so much. And then take your favorite colors and paint the square and bring the color over so it softens out. And then do the next one with your favorite color, bring it over so it softens out. And when this dries, you will see that the soft pigment, the soft colors coming through, which is really pretty. What I'm doing is I'm trying to bring it out so that you see the pale. It can get real pale. It doesn't have to be intense. And then the green. And you'll see Now the next exercise we're going to do is you'll be able to see, really see our vivid colors. This is more of a pale look with a little more water and less um, paint. And the purpose of this exercise, there is no expectations. You don't have to worry about being perfect or anything. Watercolor is an imperfect thing, so you can play with it as much as you want. The next one that we're going to do is just take some vivid colors and we're just going to make a real vivid, like I said before, I'm going to show you more intense what intense colors do. We're going to just lap it over the red. And what happens with blue and red? It becomes violet. Drop a little bit of water in that so that it blends together a little better. This is a yellow. You can see that beautiful blending that's happening. We use some violet. Lapping over the yellow. Don't need to use a lot of brush strokes. Use some green. how that's going in there. And the beauty of this is you can just add a little bit more water to make it move more. 
and you can see how the colors go together. When this dries, you'll see that the vivid colors will stand out more than the more pale colors. And so it's nice because in your paintings, you want sometimes more vivid colors, like, in, like if you're doing a red fire engine or something. So um, the next exercise I have to do, I already taped it on the back and this is going to be a fun one. I'm just going to lay it on there like that. So now we're going to do some leaves. So we're going to just take our green and then bring that up to it. And in that time too we can add some yellow in there. And then the next leaf is half. You're pressing down on the brush and then lifting it up at the end. Add a little blue, give it a little interest. Now you can take your favorite color if you want it and make a backward C. And we're just going to circle around and do fun things with this. Because it is wet, we can add more color if we want to. And make that stand out a little bit. You can see that that's running down into the leaf, and that's great. We can also make another leaf down here. Remember, you're just pressing that down on the paper, pressing your brush down. Press, press. Now, you've made a flower. What do you think of that? You That's can, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Looks like a rose. It does look like a rose, doesn't it? So just the best thing I can tell you is Practice, practice, practice. Some of my first things, I bought this, um, I'll show you. I brought it with me. Yeah. I got these uh, watercolor, watercolor journals. And they're watercolor paper. And anytime I had an idea, I would flip it open and paint. Well, I've gone through two of these already, and I'm on my third one of painting just things that I was thinking of, or I saw, or maybe there is a vase on the table with flowers and I thought I'd try and draw it and then paint it. And so this is, this is a fun thing to have at the beginning. And um, don't, don't ever expect anything of yourself. Just enjoy, just get the joy out of seeing, seeing the colors go together and the magic that happens with this because I get so much joy from it and I want you to feel that too. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. Now, does the audience have any questions? <laughs> okay, next time. <laughs> I got to throw that in there. You've got an audience. <laughs> And then I'll have the credits kind of roll up through this and stuff. You could wave at the camera. Just cheese. <laughs> hold hold see, the board up. I can't up. see which camera it is. So hold the board up. Yeah. And then that way I could do a zoom on that. And then... Thank you so much for coming. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> and sharing that with us. Thank you so much, Angela. You're welcome. <laughs> this is where I yell, Kyle, can I turn me off? <laughs> how, how long did I go for? Um, well, let's see. That was like 10, 10 15? 15 to 20. Yeah, that's about my average. So oh, you it? didn't use your key cards. I didn't because I memorized it so much, but I didn't say something. She Just cut and paste. Yeah, because I can oh. cut and paste on the film. Um, let's see, easy color.